Oh my god, good morning. We're on a, uh, what is it? Twent reminder, we're on about a 15 second delay here. I figured it out once I started that little timer in the beginning. And look at this. I'm putting the chat on screen, mostly for the replay, because sometimes people don't like to, uh, to pop out the chat in the replays. And I think it might be cool to, you know, to, to be able to see this and I can post clips of my chat on Instagram and it would make more sense. So hi, I think the chat is, yeah, it's uh, exactly in sync. Good morning, everyone. Oh gosh, let's, let's go to the top and say hello to Kirk R for being the first in the chat. Uh, Justin, 89 Tin, Henry the Viking, uh, Ben Coombs, you made it. Good morning. It's, it's early, I know, but uh, I got my coffee. I hope you have your coffee. Uh, original pair of mutants back. Painkiller's back. My friend Sean Walden. Uh, Tom Harhai, as always. Good friend of mine from college. Um, I see all of you guys in other people's chats. It's great. I like this community. Like, I'll see you guys in Ben's chats, Robert Baker's chats. Um, Andrew Santos, Magandang Umaga. Good morning to you from Manila. Oh my gosh. My Kaibigan. You are my Kaibigan. Um, John Hopkins, good morning. Good to see you. Uh, Stephen Potit, Joseph Zahenter, haven't seen you. Were you there last weekend? I can't remember you. Good to see you, man. Uh, Phil Fernandez, Justin L. El Sichan. Sichan, is that a Filipino name? I had a friend name uh, whose last name was Ichan. Uh, okay, I'm going to fast forward because... Um, Yes, so if, if you get freaked out about the chat on both sides, it's fine. This is just for me. The on-screen chat is just for the video uh, purposes. You don't have to uh, watch this, ch this chat. I'm kind of making it kind of like, you know, how video gamers have their chats on screen when they do the Twitch streams or whatever. Just something new I thought I would try. Um, PC's Extra Videos, thank you so much. Patrick! Were you uh, just on my, uh, you were just on my Instagram uh, pre-party? So maybe I'll start doing this. A, little, a couple minutes before I start the YouTube, I go on Instagram to uh, pull people from Instagram to my chat. So uh, I think Patrick was one of my uh, buddies from that, uh, what is it, like a five minute little chat, little pre-show. Uh, pre so if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's RJ underscore Ronquillo or Ronquillo however you want to pronounce it. Bobby Dotson, what's up RJ, Missouri man? You're right down the road. Playing blues in D on the porch. That's a good day. That's, a, that's, that's my kind of uh, Saturday. That's my kind of weekend. Oh, by the way, it's, uh, it's Memorial Day weekend here in the States. So uh, if you're on vacation or you have the weekend off, uh, have a good one. Uh, thank you to all of our servicemen and service women. Um, and uh, Memorial Day, it's summer, last Monday of uh, May. It's great. What are you guys doing this weekend? I'm working, but tomorrow, Sunday, so uh, in Nashville, there's a, a big Rockabilly festival that happens every year. It's similar to the, the one that they have in Vegas, the Viva Las Vegas, but it's called the Nashville Boogie Weekender. So there's a bunch, it started on Thursday, there's a bunch of uh, um, bands playing throughout the day. And at night, and uh, t Sunday is the headliner, and it's going to be J.D. McPherson, Ronnie Spector, yeah, Ronnie Spector, she's still alive, and then the B-52s closing it out. So uh, that should be interesting. I've seen J.D. McPherson a couple times. If you don't know him, uh, great artist from um, Oklahoma. I think he lives here in Nashville now. Most of his band lives here in Nashville. Um, Roddy Spector, hello, Roddy Spector, take me home to, well, that's Eddie Money, but, uh, Roddy Spector was married to Phil Spector. She, uh, be my little baby and all that stuff. Um, is Deke playing this year? Deke is playing, I think Deke played yesterday. Uh, a bunch of my 
Friends played Thursday, I think. Oh, I can't remember. Low Straight Jackets, uh, The Surfer Jets, Deke Dickerson, um, The High Jivers from right here in Nashville. Uh, who else? Nikki Hill and Matt Heartbreak Hill, if you're not familiar with those guys. They killed it, I think, yesterday. I haven't gone. You have to buy tickets uh, for every... You either have to buy the weekend pass or buy daily tickets. I think it's like 50, 50 or 60 bucks with tax. So we only bought uh, for Sunday, for the big one. But uh, yeah, all, everyone's in town. Chris Casello, I think, played last night or two nights ago. I can't remember. But it's going on today and tomorrow. So I'm excited to do that. All right, let's go to the chat. Okay, Climber, why do you need to show the chat on the video? There's no need for that. I think it's more for the, uh, the replay and for if I want to edit this in a way to share on Instagram, I think it's, I mean, I can take it off. You don't want it, I'll take it off, fine. Boom, but then you see all that, so boom. Um, if it's confusing, if, if multiple people are complaining, then I'll take it off. But um, it's, I'm, I learned it on my software. If it's confusing, then I'll, I'll take it off, but uh, just to have it on screen. You don't have to pay attention to that. Um, did I miss the chat? I think I, th I thanked you, right, Patrick? Or P yeah, Patrick, thank you for that uh, lunch. It's my taco fund. Taco lunch today. Um, okay, let me get some of these uh, questions. And as always, if you want me to see your comments or questions, you can send me a super chat that goes to my taco fund. Uh, or you can uh, tag me by putting the at r period j period ronquillo as uh, Myron Sean Walden has done, uh, and I'll see that. Or you could put a bunch of question marks, and hopefully I'll see that. But uh, I always appreciate a good super chat. Okay, uh, someone was asking, Kevin R., am I going to the Sweetwater Gear Fest by chance? Yes, that's the plan. Um, I haven't totally confirmed it yet, but... That's the plan. I'm just going to drive up for that, so um, I'm just going to play it by ear. Uh, Ju Juicy Peso, hello and good evening from Finland. I think you're my first uh, Finnish friend here on the chat. Well, good evening to you. Mitch H., the Surfer Jets are from the GTA. Yes. What's the GTA? Uh, Michael Grove has a question. How did I get my first national touring gig? Uh, so my first national touring gig was with a reggae band called Inner Circle. And um, I got that gig because I met the drummer at another gig I was at, um, playing for the Miami Heat basketball games. We would be like the house band during the games, and then there was like a little short after party. Um, so he came out. He was friends with the keyboard player. So it's basically I met someone who knew some guys, who knew some guys. And um, they were looking for a guitar player and he liked the way I played. And so I went and I guess I auditioned, but I, I think I basically had the gig then. Um, and that was my first national touring gig. That would have been, what, 2002, I think. And it was a bus tour. Um, and we went mostly the East Coast for that summer, but I toured with them all over the world for the next couple of years, so. I think 2002 to 2005 or six, I toured with Inner Circle. Okay, GTA, Greater Toronto Area. Oh, wait a second. John Hopkins, my buddy, thank you so much. RJ, good morning. I saw two concerts this week. Sammy Hagar on Wednesday, great show, and Rick Springfield on Thursday. Rick had the flu, should have canceled. What a disaster. Tell us, you, uh, you've, have you had to perform while sick? Uh, yes. And if you've seen my last video where I give you the travel tips, and my last travel tips was to bring Imodium everywhere. Um, yeah, I've traveled <laughs> when I was sick. Basically, when I was in Brazil with Inner Circle, because we're talking about Inner Circle, um, the first night I was there, I got food poisoning, and it, it lasted a good, probably a week and a half. I didn't go see a doctor until like, maybe five days after, um, but 
after I got sick, I had a couple days to try to recover, but I had to do a gig, you know, while I was sick. I had to do um, a lot, you know, live shows, and I had to be on TV with them, and I was just not feeling good. So it's awful to be sick and you have to play, especially and to travel, like getting on a plane, and it's just, it's not fun. But that's cool. You saw Sammy and Rick. I think I have a buddy that saw uh, Sammy a couple of days ago. Uh, too bad about Rick Springfield. He's a he's a great performer. Usually, but if he was sick, I could totally understand that it was a bummer. All right, fast forward. Okay. Um, Lawrence Petros, while all... <laughs> yeah, I was thinking Grand Theft Auto as well. GTA. Um, uh, Greater Toronto. And YYZ is your, uh, is your uh, air airport code, right? For Toronto, YYZ. Like the Rush song. Okay, Pete. Pete Bialk. When are you going to visit the D? Detroit is making a comeback. Downtown is actually nice. I was in... <laughs> you can walk down the Cass Corridor without getting mugged. I was in Detroit last year. Uh, maybe exactly a year ago for a wedding. And... I've been pretty much every year. I go to Detroit probably every year for a little bit to visit my friends. And I was in the Cass Corridor... Uh, a couple years ago, with some friends, went to the Third Man Records there, the Shinola store, went to a brewery, hung out. It's really nice, because I remember growing up in Detroit, and the Cass Corridor was, I mean, my mom used to work down there, like, in the 60s and the 70s, so she, she knew that it wasn't uh, the greatest part of town, and I would play punk gigs down there. Uh, I, w I played drums in a punk band in high school, and there was like a really shady, it was a punk club, but it was more like a warehouse that was kind of like a squatter's warehouse, and uh, it was rough, and uh, I like how it's changed, so I love how downtown Detroit has changed, it's, you know, with the new Tiger Stadium, and like all the theater district, and it's nice. Um... So, yeah, I'd like to come visit this summer. I'm planning on going to uh, possibly Chicago to do something at Chicago Music Exchange this summer. Uh, I don't have the details just yet, but it's in the works. So maybe I can hit Detroit at some time. Uh, I pronounced Pete Bialk's name right. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's... Uh, where are we at here? 15 minutes in. How many, uh, how many in the chat here, uh, Ben Coombs? Hello from Barry, Ontario. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of Canadians on my chat. I think it's, uh, because of you, Ben Coombs. You're, uh, you're giving me some, uh, some, uh, Canuck presents, I guess. Singer pickups and harmonic innovations. Drink and sure and Pedialyte while you're on tour and you won't get sick. Uh, it keeps, it also works for me. I, I don't know if I'm big on the Insure drinks, but the Pedialyte for sure I've, I've used. Pedialyte is like an old dime bag, <laughs> it's dime bag Daryl's secret, right? Um, if you ever drink too much, just drink like half a bottle of Pedialyte before you go to bed and you'll be good. JT Keel, my buddy, do you support any of your friend Patreons? Um, you know, I, unfortunately... I'm not on Patreon as much, except for my own thing, but I, I don't. You know, I follow a couple other guitar people on Patreon. I think I was supporting um, Ben Eller for a little bit. If you don't know Ben Eller, uh, he is a, I think he lives in Kentucky, but he's a great uh, YouTuber. There's a lot of great uh, lesson, lick lessons. Uh, he calls them the weekend wank shop, weekend wank shop. And a great guitar player, plays bass as well. Um, but I've actually learned a lot from his channel. So I was supporting him for a little bit when I first heard of Patreon. But um, I'm not, I really need to get on Patreon more. It's kind of hard to uh, keep track of everything since it's just me. 
Oh my god, am I missing a bunch of stuff here? No. Um, but yeah. Good question, though. Let's see here. Asheville, North Carolina. The chat's going by pretty quick. Morning, Red Shull. How are you? If you guys uh, saw Red Shull did a live stream the other day, it looked beautiful. Um, I went and saw your guitar at Novo uh, headquarters, Rhett. So I'll have a nice video to show you soon. We did some interesting uh, stuff with your, uh, with your parts. Yeah, so let's, we can talk about the Novo stuff. Uh, I went to Novo yesterday to shoot the next episode of my Novo build. And what we did was we cut out the body on the CNC. I mean, it was, the rough blank was already cut out, but we basically gave it its, its shape, its contour, uh, routed out for all the controls and the pickups and the trim, the neck heel and everything. Um, and then got the, uh, the curve all done. Dennis did that. I don't want to give out too much, but, uh, it was cool. I've never seen a CNC, uh, machine in action. Um, and, um, what else happened? That's about it. I, I, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I played a bunch of, uh, new builds that they're shipping out and they had that one Prince inspired, uh, Mad Cat guitar, you know, it had like two single coil, like two Strat single coils, that really nice um, tortoiseshell pick guard. Um, it was cool, played great. I think uh, Matthew took video, I don't know when he's gonna post it. If Matthew is on the chat, he's probably sleeping or playing with his dog, Matthew Timmons from Novo. Uh, okay, Stephen Poteet, three mini humbuckers on a, a Strat, worth it. Um, yeah, there's a couple of Revolta guitars that have three mini humbuckers. They might be three um, Firebird pickups, which are kind of different than mini hums. But it's an interesting sound. It's not, you're going to get those in-between tones, kind of like a Strat, but it's not going to be as glassy. It's going to be a little bit thicker sounding, I think. But I love mini humbuckers on a Strat. I think they sound great. Um... Uh, thin neck, minimal angle. I don't know what that's referring to, Skeleton Key. Um, Bobby Dotson is asking about Marcus King, if I like the Marcus King bag. Yes! I think I first caught wind of Marcus King somewhere on YouTube. He was probably doing one of those uh, performances, like jam in the van type things. And I was just blown away by A, his voice, and his B, his guitar playing. And then I kept on seeing videos of him, like I think on the Blues Cruise with Joe Bonamassa and great player. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the subject, I don't know if it's on my page. Oh, by the way, is this chat annoying you guys yet? Because I can take it out. I just kind of wanted to have it uh, for my Instagram edits, but... Um, Lee McAllister, sorry you're late. Don't worry. I'm glad you're here. Sorry. Don't, don't be sorry. It's great. Um, the Can it's the Canadian invasion. I guess, hey, if my friend Perfecto de Castro can have a bunch of Filipinos in the chat, I can have a bunch of Canadians in the chat. Ronnie Gutierrez, my buddy Ronnie G, RG, is in the chat. Good morning, RG. Ronnie, I was just telling my... Uh, the folks here about uh, uh, playing with Inner Circle. And my friend Ronnie Gutierrez also plays with Inner Circle. I think currently, or he was, at least up until last year. Ronnie, are you still playing with Circle? Um, Ronnie and I met on another gig. By the way, Ronnie G is an amazing guitar player. Uh, he can play everything. He can play Steve Vai stuff, he can play Metal. He's, he's toured with a bunch of metal bands. He's toured with Shaggy. He's toured with Inner Circle. Uh, who else? Ronnie G. I'm leaving stuff out, but um, amazing guitar player. He's taken lessons with Vi and Satriani, I think. 
crazy. You crazy, man. So, um, yeah, good to see you, dude. So, okay, why don't I play guitar? So the subject I was, I figured I would talk about um, my desert island guitar. I always get asked every chat, what's my desert island guitar? And I always say it's the Telecaster. And I kind of like went through my rack and I, I've got, I've got like seven Tele's or Tele style guitars in my collection. So I guess there is a reason why I love them so much. They're just like the really good all around guitar that I feel like I could do any gig with them, whether it's jazz, rock, hard rock, uh, country, funk, R&B. So I thought I would talk about some of my T-style guitars. Uh, and I'm gonna try to uh, play and, ch and get to your chats and questions. Obviously, if you want me to see your questions, do the super chat. But I'm gonna show you this one. This is my, this is not the first telly I ever bought. This is the second telly I've ever got. The first telly I bought was a, a Mexican telly that had uh, a humbucker in the neck that I bought at Joe's Music Quarters in Detroit on Gratiot. Yes which was the, one of the stores that I used to take guitar lessons at when I was growing up. Before they moved to Gratiot, they were on Nine Mile and Kelly. Shout out to Joe. So this was the second telly that I bought. This is a Japanese Fender JD, which stands for Jerry Donahue. Uh, I'm not sure if Tom Harhai, if you remember this in college, you might have left, but I bought this in college. This I bought at Bill's Music in Maryland, in Baltimore, Maryland. If anyone's from Maryland or knows about Bill's Music, I'm not sure if it's still there, but this is, uh, this is where it's from. And um, I use this on rock gigs. I use this in my senior recital to play Brent Mason stuff, which I'm not gonna even try. <laughs> And it's like the, the, it struck me as the most telly sounding telly for some reason. And I don't know, I've kind of gotten accustomed to having brass saddles on my tellies just because I've, I don't know, I got it in my head that, that that equals more twang for some reason. I think I heard Jerry Donahue or somebody was saying that the brass saddles give you the more twang. I don't know. But um, it's got a Strat single coil in the neck that I think I switched out to like a Duncan something or other. So the, the bridge pickup is stock and this is a, some other kind of Duncan. So it's got this uh, really great Strat neck sound. Right now I'm going through um, an exotic SP, comp SP, SP compressor, the uh, Karma MTN10, which is the uh, Ibanez Mostortion clone that I love so much, that everyone seems to be buying, which is great. And then I'm going into a JHS Pink Panther delay, which they don't make anymore, because they got in trouble for the name Pink Panther. I think it's the Lucky Cat now, but. Okay, Ben Coombs is saying brass parts will brighten your tone. So I guess if you say uh, brightness equates twang, then I guess it's partially true. Um, yeah, double bound, which I really dig. It's pretty light. Um, John Hopkins has a crazy question, but what's the deal with Telly's having three saddles versus six? Um, what's the deal in my Jerry Seinfeld voice? Uh, I want to say that people were using six saddles because of the intonation. You could individually adjust the intonation on each string. So it was better for intonation, but now they come, they have compensated uh, saddles, three, three telly saddles, 
that are compensated. I have... Do I have a guitar with one? Um, I have one guitar that has compensated saddles. It's set up for slide. I actually don't have it out. But um, I think those work just as great. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, is there a plus to having a six saddle telly bridge as opposed to a th uh, traditional three saddle? I don't know. Uh, let me know. Let everyone on the chat know. But that's a good question, John. Um, I kind of just like the look of the uh, of this more than the six saddles. Um, so that's that. So there's that. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with a Tele RG. Do you have one? I can't remember if you have one. I know you've got that cool uh, Sunburst Strat. I remember that. That was the first guitar I saw you play. <laughs> That's funny, Lawrence Petras, that's funny that your slide guitar has compensated sales. Well, it wasn't originally my slide guitar. It was kind of like my, my parts Telecaster. And then I threw on, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, flat wound strings and then raised the action and it just kind of stayed my, my slide guitar. Um, there's a couple questions here that I'd like to get to. Let's see. Steve Perry, my buddy, three telly saddles was probably Leo just being cheap. <laughs> it, it could have been just like the, the early designs, like, eh, we'll just make it simple. It could have been just one single saddle. Um, okay, Thunder F, how to progress after I learned chords and cage system? Trying to improvise, but what next? Um, I think if you have your chords and your cage system down, then yet yeah, improvising would be your next logical steps. Um, learning scales, you know, start with the pentatonic. Learn that in different positions would probably be my uh, recommendation. You don't have to go heavily into modes just yet, you know, knowing like uh, Ionian, Dorian, Lydian, and all that stuff. You don't really, because a lot of those modes I don't use. Dorian I'll use, Mixolydian is a very common thing. Um, but like Phrygian, I, I rarely need to pull that out. But um, pentatonic scales. Learn your pentatonics. Learn about different uh, licks. Learn licks, phrasing. Um, that would be my uh, recommendation. Good question. Leland Berg, three saddle brass have less ice pick highs than individual steel saddles. Good to, yeah, I think I heard that too. It's... Um, it's kind of a mellower. I mean, I think Ben said they're they can kind of be brighter, but maybe it's like a high mid thing where it's it's not so brash as uh, steel. I don't know. We could get into a uh, a big can of worms with that. Michael Grove, do I give les lessons locally in Nashville? I don't. Unfortunately, uh, I don't have enough free time to do stuff like that. I, I barely have enough free time to hang out and see shows and have a social life. Um, but I do have a, uh, a slide course coming out, um, which is my first foray into the lesson package, lesson product. That's coming out. Uh, I might be toying with the idea of doing Skype lessons in the future, um, but that's in the future when I can get a a handle on my, my daily schedule. Cause it's a little bit crazy. Um, yes. And anyone, who, if you guys have questions, a lot of my friends here on the chat can also help answer it. Robert Baker, did I see you? Robert Baker, good morning. You're in, a, you're in like a East Coast time zone. So I, it's earlier here. Uh, okay, okay uh, let's see. I'm going to stay with the chat the way it's going. I, I can't rewind because then I lose my place. Uh, Desert Island App Syndicate asks, Desert Island App. Um, 
that I own? That's a hard question. I want to say that this PT100 does everything, but I'm not, with most multi-channel amps, I'm not as fond as of the clean uh, channel as I am with the dirty channels. Um, I'm actually, okay, so today I'm actually plugged into my Morgan uh, for once, and the clean on this, which is not totally clean, it just has a better, it rings out a little bit better, especially with these tellies. And that's the uh, Mostortion clone. Uh, Thomas Schweitzer, I see that comment going by. Uh, your American Standard Strat needs a refret. I want to switch to 6130 medium jumbos or 6105. Uh, I'm not sure what's on. Okay. I always stick with 6105s. Are those like the standard kind of medium talls? I always get 6105 and 6150 uh, mixed up, but I want to say I, I usually just go for 6105s. Um, yeah. That's my, that's my recommendation. Um, Red Shell's got a Bad Cat Cub 40, um, and it kills. You know, I had a, a Bad Cat, I had two Bad Cats way back in the day, early 2000s. I had a Hot Cat 30, and then the Bad Cat, the Cub I had was like a 15 watt combo. And I liked them, but I didn't love them. So I ended up selling both of them. But uh, when I played the newer Bad Cats at the NAMM show, I was, I think I was impressed. So they might have changed the design a little bit or something, but um, yeah, amps are, there's so many different kinds of amps. I've got uh, that 68 uh, custom Vibrolux reverb amp. It works great. It's not my favorite Vibrolux type of circuit. I got that old Super Reverb, which I never plug in. I probably should do that. I got another Morgan back there. And that was always, there's a, oh, there's a Marshall Plexi back there. David Bray modded. I love them all, but I really just stick with one amp, which has usually been this on the road. This Morgan RCA 35 has been my road amp. It's got that, I have no idea how it, this is probably from the case, the uh, anvil case it was in. But um, it's got dead bugs in it, it's, it's old. It's only been, the tubes have been changed once in six years, seven years. That was the first time I ever played and sang on, on a live stream. That's never gonna happen again, I promise. Okay, um, let's, uh, I'm gonna show you some of my other T-style guitars. So there's this one, which was my, one of my first tellies. The next major telly that I got was this. This is a, I don't know, 60, 62 Relic Custom Shop Fender. And this, <laughs> I love this. This is all stock. I haven't changed anything. The pickups are stock. If I was to pick one telly out of all of my my tellies, I would this would be my number one just because it's just super comfortable. I love that it's got this like Steve Cropper type of feel to me. I love the uh, finish, the relicking. Um, this has uh, the stainless steel saddles. If you can uh, zoom in. So these are brass saddles. Ben Coombs Mystery Train is my test riff on all the guitars. It's a good riff.
Name that tune. Okay, um, so yeah, this I got at, um, oh, Calif uh, is it called California Vintage Guitar? It's in Van Nuys, Sherman Oaks, in the valley there in LA. Um, I played a, a few different uh, Relic Tellies there, and this was the one that popped out. And I'm glad it was, because I really like this, this color and this finish, Mint Guard. I put a, I named it Bloomfield because it reminded me of Mike Bloomfield. Mike Bloomfield, Steve Cropper. Uh, David, Dave Ars is, uh, Dave Ars Guitars was the first one to chime in on Summertime Blues. You're correct, sir. You are correct, sir. Remember that? Phil Hartman. Uh, doing his Ed McMahon in person. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Um, Ain't no cure for the summertime blues, Robert Baker. I don't have my my Bigsby. <laughs> Fail. Um, this sounds sounds like you're 71, Ben. I've never seen you 71. <laughs> It's just, it's got like, um, it's hard to explain, but compared to my other tellies, it's got this like uh, bouncy feeling. Like when, even acoustically, it just feels like, you know, when you're, when, when a guitar is against your body, you can feel the re you can feel it resonate in a certain way. It's squishy to me. I don't know how to explain it. It doesn't feel, some, some tellies that I have just feel kind of tight. Um, but this feels really squishy. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Philly G Guitar Man wants to hear Pipeline. of the song is going to cost you. Super colon blow. Where did that come from, Tom? Oh, super. <laughs> oh, that was the, uh, is that an SNL skit? Super colon blow? Are we talking about Phil Hartman again? What a great guy. Do you remember that? Um, what was that commercial? Uh, did he do the, um, Oops, I crapped my pants commercial for the adult diapers. Do you remember that commercial? Oops, I crapped my pants. I wear them, and I just did. That was like the end of that commercial. That was funny. Remember? Um, Robert Baker, that is the first telly I have ever seen that I like the Rosewood board. Thank you. I feel like, because I was touring with this, with Thompson Square the first year, I feel like the it needs to be oiled a little bit. It's it it it's a lot drier than when I f remember it. And the um, the neck feels totally different than when I first bought it. And it's probably just from abuse on the road. But someone was asking me why I like Relic guitar so much, and because, and the reason is because like I'll take these on the road, and I don't want to uh, feel bad about getting them banged up. And I'm sure this has gotten banged up. But you can't tell because I can't tell which was, which parts were relic and which parts were me. So it's more of like peace of mind. It's not like, cause I think it looks cool necessarily, although I kind of do. But for me, it's the peace of mind that I don't feel bad about banging them up on the road. And just, it's a mental thing. Like when I play it, it does, they do feel like a good relic guitar does feel broken in for some reason. You know, it could be a mental thing, just seeing the the uh, the parts that are kind of like uh, crusty and, and, and um, rusty. It just, I'm, I'm more comfortable when it's like beat up. Like I, I feel like I don't deserve really fancy new guitars. I feel bad playing them. Cause I gotta like, you know, Touch them with kid gloves or whatever, whatever that reference is called. Okay, um, the next telly 
build. Okay, Pete Bialk, let me see your question. Uh, did you get sick of that Are You Gonna Kiss Me or Not song with T-Square? No. In fact, I loved, I loved playing all of their songs. It, uh, it was probably one of the funnest gigs that I've ever done. Uh, and I never, I'm sure they get tired of singing it. They've been doing it longer than I've, I've been playing it with them. But, you know, it's always the last song of the show. And it's only two or three chords, so it's super simple. And it's more like, you know, the crowd loves it. So, you know, even though you've played that song multiple times, just to see the crowd reaction and to, to feel that energy is, is enough for me. So no, I never got sick of playing any of their tunes. And I'm not saying that because I think they're in the chat right now because they might not be in the chat, but. So this, I'm only, I'm only gonna play this a little bit because I've, I've uh, wasted my time on the other guitars. This is my Paisley LSL Tele. You've probably seen these in videos. Um, have I tried exotic tellies? Uh, I have at the NAMM show. They, those are really nice as well. So this is, this is my hardcore touring telly. I've used this on the Thompson Square gig, on Judith Hill gigs. Um, this I bought 2014 at Corner Music here in Nashville, right when I joined Thompson Square. Um, in rehearsals, I've, I learned that I was the telly guy because, so there was two guitar players, my friend Matt Hauer, who was the Les Paul guy. So I kind of got put into the, the telly guy situation because, you know, the combination of a Les Paul and a telly is a great combination to have for, for country music, for, for pop country, for classic rock. So I was the telly guy. So I brought two tellies on the road that this one, the blonde one, and then I bought this one, the Paisley. This is, uh, pa it, it looks green and yellow, but it's actually Paisley on, they call it Blonde Burst. So it's blonde starting here, and then it bursts out to, uh, to black, to darker. So it looks green, which I dig. It's very 70s looking. Um, it's got graphite saddle, so no brass or stainless steel. I put the graphite in because this was my touring guitar and I didn't want to break any strings ever, and it, it's never broken strings, so. Graph Tech, love you guys. Um, nuts stayed the same, tuners stayed the same. Pickups have gone through def different changes. Uh, for the longest time I was touring with, first I put a Lawler J Street, Tele Bridge, and then I didn't want the hum anymore, so I put in a Duncan, like, uh, I guess it was a Duncan 59, so it was like a humbucker in a single coil sized. And then I just put these in, which are the Mojo Tone Broadcaster Quiet Coils, and they're quiet, and they sound like a telly. Let me put on some gain. Oh, I don't have gain, I'm in, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong uh, amp. Let me turn up my distortion. Very minimal hum. So this has been a workhorse. I mean, it was minimally relict when I got it, but I can tell you that I, like that's all me. This is all my buckle rash. And it's so deep. Well, you can feel the grain. So it's it's already on into the wood. It's got ridges there. Uh, this is, so LSL doesn't do uh, serial numbers to my knowledge. And he names all of the guitars and this one is named Mariel. Uh, where that comes from, I have no idea, but see this, I can't really tell which dings I did or which was relic when I bought the guitar. And that's why I like having this on the road. Cause I can, I can beat it up and it'll still 
hold its value to me. So that's that. Hey, Ben. Ben Coombs, what's the, uh, the chat number? How many people do we have on the chat here? Chat checkup time. Um, let's see, any questions here? Did I miss any super chats? Lee McAllister, I'm turning 18 soon. I didn't know you were that young. You seem so mature. Congratulations on turning 18 soon. I've been debating on getting an ES335 style guitar, Fender Jazzmaster, or a Tele. What are your suggestions? Lee, I'm not sure what guitar you own right now or what guitars you own right now. Um, let me know uh, if you have a Strat or whatever. If you have a Strat, I would say uh, getting a 335 guitar would be pretty complimentary just because they're it's a different style of guitar um you know if you have a, a, a strat already then a jazz master and telly you know they're both fenders styles and they're kind of similar in the design so uh and they usually have single coils so a 335 with humbuckers would be a great um second guitar to have if you have a les paul then i would say get the, the telly um, I don't know if I'm too big on Jazz Masters. I'm excited for my Novo build, which is Jazz Master uh, influenced, but it's going to have mini hums. And that really, that's it. And it feels a little bit better than a Fender Jazz Master. Sorry, Fender. Uh, PCs Xers videos. How do I feel about Filtertron pickups? Uh, I've got one guitar that has them, they're okay. I feel like they're kind of like a one trick pony for a certain style, for a certain number of styles. But be, that being said, I have played a couple higher output filter trons that sound just as good as like any Duncan humbucker to me. So I think they're great. Um, I like them in the bridge a little bit more than in the neck position. I'm not too fond of the neck position Filtertron sound. Uh, 201 watching, oh my God, I think that's a record. That's amazing, amazing Saturday morning. I think it's maybe because it's Memorial Day and everyone's got a, a nice weekend off. I took the motorcycles out a couple days ago, both of them. I got my 1974 Honda finally started, that mother bitch of a motorcycle. Um, uh, okay, I'm kind of trying to keep track of the uh, chat here. Okay, um, Todd Flower says 335, Lee. Um, I th you know what? I don't have... Okay, I've got one... Th I used to have a, a Gibson 335. It was a 70... 77. I liked it. I think I really liked the humbuckers more than anything the PAFs that it came with, but I, I sold it to a buddy because I wasn't using it, and my, my friend was, uh, was on tour in Chicago, and I think he was looking for a 335, and I sold it to him. Um, so I was out of a 335 for a while, and then I got a, a new D'Angelico-style uh, Deluxe DC, which is a nice guitar. The only thing is, the neck on that is is thin and it's thin everywhere. You know how sometimes like necks will be thin down here and then it'll get a little bit thicker, which is kind of nice towards the 12th fret. It stays thin all the way and that's kind of a, the deal breaker for me. Everything else, the fit and finish are great. The frets are great, stays in tune great. It looks pretty as hell. It's got a, um, a matte cherry finish, which is great for video. The pickups are fine. It's got like a six-way six -way toggle switch. So it's uh, normal on three of the ways, and the other three ways it splits the, uh, the humbuckers, so, which is a great idea. It's not my favorite design. But the neck is uh, a problem for me, and I think I might actually be putting that on reverb. So if anyone wants to buy it at a good price, I've got, I might have a D'Angelico uh, 335 style for you. I'll post the link. Uh, probably on my Instagram when I, when I put it up there. 
So, but other than that, I am uh, in the process of building, hopefully, a, a 335 style guitar with uh, TMG guitars. I played their um, 335s at the NAMM shows a couple times, uh, and I really like them. Um, and why did I choose them over Gibson? I think, I don't know, I did, I, a lot of those TMG guitars feel broken into me, you know? They're, they can be slightly relict, which is super comfortable to me. And I just, the, when I played them at the NAMM show, I, I instantly resonated with a lot of them. So if, uh, if Jonathan from TMG is watching, let's do it, let's make it happen. Red Shell, yes, we're talking about 335s. Um, you have a really nice one that you were talking about in your chat. I think, um, especially with 335s, it's kind of hit or miss. You, you really have to play through a bunch to find a good one. And I've had this chat with, um, with Guthrie Trap and Fort Thurston. They've got really nice 335s, 60s 335s that... I've, I played them and they played amazing, but I've never played anything that good you know, in the newer Gibsons or like in a store. So you really, they're like, they're like snowflakes. Each one is different. Each one is going to play differently. And I feel more so with 335s and semi-hollows um, more than like a Strat or Telly, but you know, those, those vintage 335s aren't cheap. And um, I would love one, but I don't know. My, my dream 335 is actually a 345. Like, I want that back to the future cherry 345 with the trapezoid inlays and, you know, it's Freddie King, it's, it's Marty McFly to me. So that's kind of the, my dream 35 and it might be easier and cheaper for me to build something like that as opposed to find a vintage you know, whatever, 1964, 65, 345. So that's where I'm at with that. Okay, I got some cool stuff to show you. So I showed you all my, all my traditional tele guitars. I'm gonna show you um, some of the different T style inspired stuff that I have. Starting with this badass guitar. Look at this. I haven't pulled this one out in a while. That's what she said. Um, this is a Titan uh, KR, KR12, I think the name is. Titan by Cower. This is uh, made by Doug Cower. I'm not sure if he's still making these. I think he said he was taking a break from the Titan brand. This is kind of the, uh, the I, I don't want to say budget, but it's the lower priced Cower design. I have uh, two other Cower guitars. But this I fell in love with. I demoed. Um, I got the I got the live stream burps, guys, from talking too much and sucking in too much air. So I did a demo for Doug. Um, he had a guitar pretty pretty similar to this, and I had to send it back. But I told him that I fell in love with it and I kind of want that one. Um, I want to say the only difference was he had a mastery. Tele bridge, which is awesome. If you haven't seen the mastery Tele bridges or Tele saddles, uh, they're super cool, uh, and they're not cheap. But this has I don't know Lawler's Lawler Imperial and some kind of Lawler Tele pickup. And the cool thing about this is he puts some extra switches, which I'll show you. Um, <laughs> The, uh, the volume knob is kind of needs some fixing. So it's got that neck humbucker sound, which is great. play jazz. Really nice uh, in the middle pickup. Uh, but, but 
that's so in the bridge position he put the switch which kind of emulates a half cocked or quarter walk quarter cocked uh, wah I don't know if you can tell tonally so this is normal and this is the uh, switch the cock switch and the other switch that's cool and if you know me you know I like the out of phase in the middle position so This has a really great out of phase sound. So when I want to do my Albert King, Peter Green stuff, Tilly Shull are in the chat. Are you guys on the couch watching on two different devices? Because that would be crazy. <laughs> yes, Tom Harhai, huge cocked wah goes along with Boner Flame. <laughs> just put new strings on this. This is, um, I put the Jimi Hendrix set. Uh, the Fender uh, Jimi Hendrix gauges, 10 to 38 on this. Because it has that reverse headstock, so it's like the perfect tension. It really is. play this a little bit more. I think now that I changed the strings and kind of got it set up, it's like, it's becoming one of my favorite instruments. Okay. Any more of this? You guys like this one? Should I put this more in my demo videos and my lesson videos? Cause this hasn't been getting that much love lately. And um, this really is a cool guitar. It's super simple too, because if you're not familiar with uh, the Titan brand or their, what they were doing is they kind of designed this guitar so you could just uh, buy individual um, loaded pick guards and just swap them out really easily because it's all the same uh, pick guard route. And I think this is just like the, a pool a pool routing, so you can put any kind of pickup combination. Yeah, it feels hollow there. So um, they do come with different bridges, I wanna say, but I wanna say it's still the same outline. So you could swap out any kind of uh, loaded pick guard that they, they can sell it, or you can just uh, ask for a, a pick guard and put your own pickups and controls in. So th this is a really cool thing that they were doing. I'm, I'm not sure if they, are still doing it, but um, yeah, this is I dig it. And this was a custom build. I, I'm not sure if the reverse headstock uh, was a thing that they normally do, but I'm sure some other people have them. So that's that. Am I boring you guys yet with the telly stuff? Um, I've got two more to show you. So the next one up is pretty Telly-ish. This is the Vola. Vola Quaint. Um, I'm not exactly sure what pickups these are. This I haven't tuned up in a while. But um, I did a demo for this guitar a couple months ago. And um, it's uh, hanging out with me for a little bit. Can't remember, Robert Baker, if you're still on the chat, did you ever demo this guitar? 
or have this in your possession? I think Robert Baker knows more about the Vola stuff than I do. So this is the uh, Japanese um, built Volas. You know they have Japanese now and USA made ones. But the neck on this is super thick as with uh, all Vola guitars. It's probably one of the, the, the fattest necks I've ever felt on a Fender style guitar. It does remind me of, if you ever played those, the old Jeff Beck models, like the early Jeff Beck uh, signature Fenders. It had a really thick baseball batty neck. It reminds me of that, but I was told that they modeled the neck after the Richie Kotzen telly. There you go, Robert Baker. I did demo one and I didn't know how to activate the rail pickup. Wait, you have to activate this? Shut up, really? You just taught me something on live TV. Holy shit. <laughs> okay, well I did this exact same thing as you. I didn't know that thing, that uh, thing pulled up. Jesus Christ, how come nobody, Greg didn't tell, tell me that. So, it's still noiseless. Oh my God. This like became a, a brand new guitar just now. Thanks to uh, Robert Baker telling me. No thanks to Greg from Vola not telling me. Shut the front door. It kind of brightens up the middle position too, which is cool. How many, okay, I think it's there, inside joke on us. How many guitars does it take to activate a hot rail? <laughs> Two. I'm not doing another demo, guys, but thank you for telling me, Robert, shoot. I feel like every guitar I get nowadays, I have to like pull on all the knobs just to make sure that there's not extra features that I don't know about. Cause this has happened to me before. And it's very slight. It's just that, that little bit of, that little push over the cliff as Nigel Tufnell would say. So that's on 10. And you know what we do. 11. So this guitar goes to 11, uh, just in case you didn't know, just by doing that. Good to know. Um, I got one more guitar to show you that I received in the mail yesterday that I am I think I can talk about because I saw it on their website. And I literally, I haven't, I haven't plugged this in yet. So I'm not sure, even sure this is in tune. So this is a Grez. It's a new model that uh, Barry from Grez Guitars is building. I believe it's called the Folsom. So if you're not familiar with Grez guitars, he's a, it's Barry, and I'm gonna butcher his last name, but it's like Grezbik, Grezebik. Um, and he's out in uh, Northern California, builds beautiful guitars. A lot of his builds are uh, like semi-hollow, um, kind of rockabilly jazz guitars, I guess. A, a lot of players like, uh, if you follow me or know, my 
West Coast blues friends and, and uh, um, jazzy friends, Tommy Harkin Rider, Kid Ramos plays them. Um, uh, what's a, my friend in Seattle? Tim Lurch has a Grez Guitars. Um, who else? I can't remember, but uh, he's, this year is um, starting to do solid bodies. And this is an interesting guitar. It's an interesting shape. It's almost got like this old, like you might say, oh, that looks like a Gibson, but it's, it looks more to like, like a, an old Paul Bigsby style guitar for some reason. I don't know if I'm saying, if I'm thinking of the right guitar, but I want to say one of the earliest Bigsby branded guitars, like in the fifties or forties or fifties, maybe, uh, it, was, it had this like sharp cutaway and this single cutness. Single cutness! But um, let's see what it sounds like. It's, just... it's, a, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot more hi-fi sounding than the Vola. And it's called the Folsom, so I want to say it's it's kind of got this uh, classic country connotation, maybe. But I guess also, since he lives in Northern California, that would make sense, too. Um, quick tune-up. This wasn't in tune when I took it out of the case. And by the way, these ship with really nice Reunion Blues gig bags, which are one of my favorite gig band, gig bag manufacturers next to Mono. Yeah, Lee McAllister, uh, what are we talking about? Tried one, and, okay. That's something else. Pete Biak, prison tone. I'm not even going to try to sing that. Yes, PC extras, PC's extra videos. Paul Pigat plays a Grez too. Paul Pigat, great Canadian guitar player, one of my favorite people. Um, I guess I need to get a Grez then. I think it's time for me to get a Grez if Paul Pigat has one and Tommy Harkenrider has one and uh, I think Kid Ramos has one. So here's the neck pickup. It looks like it's a Hershey bar style. <laughs> I like it. It's clear. It's quiet. Let me take the delay off. It's got a Wilkinson uh, chop tele bridge. Um, these knobs are interesting. They they feel like they're from like a an audio component, like a stereo. Uh, very cool. Light, super light. That's one thing I've always noticed about Grez guitars are they're super light. And I don't. It's not chamber. Huh? No, it's not chambered or anything, as far as I know. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Super light. The headstock has a little cool little notch, which, see the little hole? That's interesting. Um, it's got these vintage uh, Grover tuners that almost feel like uh, acoustic like Waverly tuners but the neck angle 
headstock angle, I should say, it's pretty minimal, which I like. So it's gonna stay in tune pretty good. Dietrich Cap, thank you so much. Good to see you. Uh, how goes the slide lesson? Right now, I'm the useless idiot in open D when my time to play rhythm rolls around. Um, well, my slide course, I believe, is being edited. I'm not in charge of that. But um, it's on the way, so don't you worry. Um, I, t I taught it in open E, which is basically open D, but a whole step up, so. Um, there, I do touch on a little bit of, uh, of rhythmic playing and some chord uh, voicings that you can use in that open tuning. So, um, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. There's only so much you can do playing rhythm, but a lot of it is just kind of working out chord voicings in that particular tuning that you can use. And they might not be full chords, they might just be partial chords, but that's, the us that's usually the way I get around um, playing rhythm on an open tuned slide guitar is just kind of finding like a triad that you can play um, or a certain pattern that sounds good. So don't try to play like, you know, camp big campfire chords when you're playing open tuning. Uh, so yeah, I got 15 more minutes on this chat. It's 10, 15 here. So any questions, ask away, I'm all yours. Uh, three Card Monty is heading to his guitar store right now. Buy something good. Ben says it, uh, this guitar reminds him of a Les Paul Special or Junior with the thin body and those tuners. Yeah, it kind of does feel almost kind of like a um, Melody Maker-ish too. You know, the Joan Jett Melody Maker kind of style guitar. I mean, this could probably do <laughs> punk. You can totally rock out with this. And you can like have a slung really low, you know, and just kind of then do that really cool Joan Jett vibe. Uh, Kevin R, what's the most valuable guitar in your collection? Monetary value and or sentimental? Good question, man. Um, and thank you for that. I'm sorry if I missed any of your chats prior. Um, uh, but I'll try to get to them uh, later on in the chat. Um, where Kevin R, what's the most valuable guitar in your collection? Monetary value. Um, I would say monetary wise, and I'm not going to say how much it costs, but the uh, I have a 1964 Gibson Barney Kessel, which is my really my only vintage guitar I own. And that, I want to say, well, yeah. I mean, that's valuable to me. Um, I'm trying to think. As far as the sentimental, probably my first guitar, which I still have, which is my, my blue Fender Strat. I made a video on my first guitar rig that I featured on that. So those two guitars are probably, I mean, all of my guitars are valuable, but those are, have very, uh, are very important to me. Red Shell is gone. Great steam, dude. <laughs> I'll see you the, in the next steam. Thank you, Rhett. Have a good day. Have a good weekend, and I'll see you uh, next time you're in town. Um, Sean Walden, uh, any advice on where to start learning rockabilly? Yes, there is an amazing YouTube guy. Oh, man. How am I going to get this? I'll put a link. What's his name? There's, a, there's one guy that does uh, YouTube guitar lessons that does um, mostly rockabilly. And I'm going to see if I can find him. Um, but I subscribed to him. Uh, he just posted something. I I'll find it. I I'm sorry I'm taking up this part of the chat with... Um, um, Damien Bot Bocci. Damien Bocci. I think that's his name. So that's just his... Uh, his uh, channel name but if you if you search uh killer rockabilly licks lesson 
and just you'll find his video and you'll find his channel. Damien Bachi. Great rockabilly teacher. Um, Chuck Booth, thank you for that. Uh, Taco Fund. I keep looking at bootlegger guitars but haven't made the jump. Have you tried one? I haven't. I don't know if I've seen those guitars. Uh, but I'll look them up. Bootlegger guitars. That sounds familiar, but I can't picture them in my head right now. Um, so Tilly and Rhett, goodbye. Have a good day. Subi. Oh my gosh. Subi Snacks. Donating to my taco fund. Thank you, Subi. Love your playing. RJ, here's half a Starbucks on me. Thank you. I can buy two coffees now. I appreciate that. I'm going to go get some tacos or something. Um, Todd Flowers knows Damien. Damien is a great teacher out of Tampa, Florida. Yes. Thank you for that uh, info because I couldn't think of his name for the longest time and it's good to know he's in Tampa. Um, I saw a question. J Jesus Leon. I almost called you Jesus. Do you always use pedals or do you prefer going without? Um, I probably, I don't do, a, I don't have a lot of gigs that I can go straight into the amp with. I wish I did, you know, like simple rock gigs. I used to, I used to have just a Les Paul and a Marshall and maybe like a, a Tube Screamer or an Overdrive in front and that was it. I, I don't think I even had a tuner. Uh, and just that feeling of having like, zero or one pedal on the on the floor is great it's a great feeling but with most of my jobs and gigs i i kind of need different pedals to play all those overproduced pop songs <laughs> so i i rely on pedals a lot um let's see here yep damien's a great player and a great guy thank you pc's extra videos um, good morning, Judd Austin. Good morning from Cali. Good morning. It's like, what, eight, eight o'clock there. Talking about Desert Island guitars. I haven't heard of Bad Fano yet. Well, let me tell you, check out the new Novos. I haven't played a new no. I haven't played a Novo guitar that I didn't like. There's something about those guitars that just, um, immediately resonate with me. They're so cool. And the, like the necks, I was telling Matthew yesterday, Matthew Timms at Novo, I was telling him the necks are thinner than I normally like, but for some reason, the contour that they do with it, it's a perfect combination. It's, it's a thin feeling neck, but then it's got a really comfortable back contour. So it kind of evens out. And uh, there's a lot of players that have big, bigger hands than I, than I do that love playing the Novo. So they're super comfortable. Um, okay, I'm going to take a couple questions for the last 10, 10 minutes, unless you want me to, to sing and play. No, you don't. Uh, Lee McAllister, have I heard of The Living End? Yes! I've totally, I totally got into The Living End when I was in uh, college. I'm trying to remember the, the lead singer's name. It's uh, Chris, Chris something, right? Um, oh, gosh. We're friends, I think we're actually friends on Facebook because we have a, uh, uh, we have mutual friends in real life. Chris something from The Living End. But yeah, great. Um, I don't know if you'd call them rockabilly, but they're kind of like a punk rockabilly band. Totally dig The Living End. They're from Australia too, right? Um, Tom Harhai, thank you. You've got Novo Boner now. My band can't handle Are you getting one, dude? If you get one... Someone has to get so I posted that picture of the the Prince inspired guitar. I forget which store it's being shipped to, but I, I'm pretty sure it's available for sale. I don't know if anyone bought it yet, but someone someone that I know has to buy that guitar. Please, somebody. I posted it on my Instagram and all my friends, uh, all my cohorts. Mark Letieri was saying how much he dug it. Stevie D from from uh, Buck Cherry said he dug it. Someone's got to buy it. Somebody I know has to buy that guitar. It's such a cool guitar. Um, Chris Robertson, I appreciate that uh, taco fun. Thanks for your videos. They have great value for the guitar community. Please keep up the, the work you do. I will, man, and I appreciate that. Please keep on watching. 
I hope to have more videos for you guys. Oh my God, the super chats are going crazy. Yes, Chris Cheney, Tom Harhai, Chris Cheney, uh, which, which is funny because there's a bass player, Chris Cheney, that plays on all the, all the, like Jane's Addiction stuff and uh, does a lot of studio work. Chris Cheney, but this is a different Chris Cheney, right? Chris Cheney and from the Living End, Gretsch player. Um, Paul P. Man Howland, thank you for that taco money fund. Have a coffee on me. Great stream, RJ. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, ben Coombs, how about a uh, a uh, ch a number check, a number update before I uh, before I stop streaming? I appreciate you guys hanging out on the stream. This was a good one. Um, Steve Turner, how about punk surf bands like the Dead Kennedys or the Cramps? Um, I sort of got into the Dead Kennedys when I was younger. I started skateboarding. Around that time, I guess this would have been the mid-80s. The Cramps, I never got into the Cramps. I don't know why. There's a lot of uh, punkabilly, surfabilly punk bands that I never got too, too into. Um, 192 watching. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate that. I can't really buy from U.S. stores in the U.K. Bam Mosey. Um... Well, okay, so bam, your good good comment. A lot of uh, Novo's retailers are in Europe. I rem I know there's one in Paris. I forget um, the name of it, but there's a lot of retailers that buy Novo guitars that are in in Europe. So they they'll ship them to the uh, the stores in Europe, and you can buy them from them. Um, Heinz Rebellious, what's your favorite telly mod? And what is the most unnecessary modification of a telly? I don't have a favorite telly mod other than just changing the pickups to something I like. Joel B Music, do you regret any tattoos? Yes. This tattoo right here. This tattoo was something I got in Detroit. It's supposed to be a Detroit D and the, the guy was an awful tattoo artist. So I went to my guy in Florida and got a real Detroit D on this arm. So yeah, I regret this one. But I, I, don't, I don't believe in uh, necessarily lasering off tattoos. Just get them covered up. So I, maybe I'll cover that up with something. Um, Tom Har, smash, smash that like button. Yes, yeah, smash that li like button, please. Um, Where's, okay, Ronnie G, did you say something? Where are you, buddy? I'm going back and forth on this chat. Okay, um, Bam was referring to the Prince style guitar. I'm sure I could find a Novo new EU if I tried. That Prince guitar might be going to an EU retailer. I'm not sure. I remember Matthew told me it was going to a store, but he didn't tell me if that store was in the in Europe. Um, Sean Fisher asks, were you a fan of Blind Melon in the 90s? They're one of my all-time faves. Highly underrated in my opinion. Um, so my sister had the, the Blind Melon CD and I, I took it. I think I still have it. I was sort of a fan of that record for like a really short time. Um, and I, and I was listening to XM radio and I heard, oh, one of their songs... Uh, something about no, not, not, not the no rain song, but it was another thing. Like, I, I feel like the sun is not coming out today. Uh, a change, something, something change. And I remember listening to that. I'm like, I remember this song. And Shannon Hoon had a great voice, you know, high, high alto, almost soprano voice. It's great. Very uh, underrated singer. I wasn't too hip to their music. I thought it was just okay, but Shannon Hoon's voice. Uh, if you don't know Shannon Hoon, I think I'll, he also sang background on Guns N' Roses' um, Don't Cry or something like that. Something on one of the Use Your Illusion records he sang backgrounds on. Um, fun fact. So, um, let's see here. 
Okay, we're talking about Blind Melon. Favorite slide for Electric, Ian McGuire, 93. Uh, my favorite slides are usually thick-walled glass slides. So I've been using uh, a brand called Diamond, Diamond Bottlenecks. Uh, they're out in the UK. Uh, it's a guy named Ian McWee. Builds, builds, makes the most beautiful glass slides I've ever played. And I've got a couple uh, custom ones that he built for me. Um, and they're all these thick, I don't know how many millimeters they are, but they're very thick walled glass slides. And I, I prefer those over brass or uh, porcelain or any stuff like that. Bam, yeah, Change, I guess that's the, uh, the name of that song. Um, Ronnie G, yes. Okay, so it was Don't Cry that Shannon Hoon sang Backgrounds Are. And you can hear it, because like, he's got a very high voice. So I want to say he can, it's a higher range than Axel, comfortably. Tones of Home. Yeah, I remember that song. Did Blind Melon only had like one or two albums, right? I can't remember. Um, okay, a couple more questions. Where are we at? 10, 1028. Um, Thunder F, what's my favorite Eastwood guitar um, that I ever played? For the longest time, I was saying the uh, Tuxedo was my main Eastwood guitar. Uh, but I just played their their Wandre, which is uh, basically a take on um, the Wandre guitar that... Uh, oh, God, why can't, I, I, can't, I can't think of his name. It has like a tremolo on it. Want oh, 3P or something. I can't remember, remember the model. It's a newer one. It's white. It's got a black guard. It's got a tremolo on it. That, that became one of my favorite guitars. Kevin R, Extra Avocado, My Wife and I Love Watching. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate the, the, taco, uh, uh, the taco fun. Extra Avocado. I'm not going to Chipotle. I will never go to Chipotle. I'm going to my, uh, my local taqueria here. Hopefully I'll catch you at GearFest. Yes, ho hopefully I'll see you guys there. Uh, let's start a Michigan-born reggae band. Okay, I'm down. Can I play drums? Because one of my, um, if people ask me like, what would you do if you didn't play guitar? And I'd be, and I always say, I'd play drums in a reggae band because that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, let's see. SD40 Hound Dog. That's a great Eastwood guitar as well. Uh, have you played the Mandata? Yes, I have. The Revolta Mandata. I think I did a demo on that uh, a while back. Um, Ted Green, Ronnie G. What, how did Ted Green get in the picture? What were you talking about? I missed the early 90s, and then you said Ted Green. Ted Green, the jazz guitar player, right? Check him out. He's a great guitar player I bought I have two of his books um, just great for solo guitar arrangements if you're into that stuff um, Ben Coombs I hope we get together at Summer Nam yes we're gonna get together because I'll be I'll be there every day I'll have a camera guy with me running around doing stupid stuff so you're gonna be in my my Summer Nam videos for sure um, Tommy Duke, am I going to see Chris Stone Kingfish Ingram tomorrow night? Uh, I was going to. I had him out in the calendar, but uh, my wife and I decided to go check out um, the B-52s with Ronnie Spector tomorrow at the um, Nashville Boogie Weekender. So unfortunately, I won't go see Kingfish uh, at Third and Lindsley. But if you go, tell him I said hello, and it's going to be a killer show. I know. One of my favorite guitar players, Kingfish. Um, let's see here. Okay, guys, I'm going to sign off. I hope this, this, this chat window wasn't bugging you guys, but I don't know. We'll see. It might be good in the long run just to have it on the screen. But thanks, guys. Have an enjoyable weekend. And I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me on, uh, on this Saturday morning. Don't forget to, uh, if you have any more questions for me, the chat goes on for a little bit after I stop streaming. And then you can ask me questions down in the comment section of this video, which will be on replay uh, on my channel. So guys, have a good weekend. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend here in the States. 
uh, and I'll see you in the next chat. I got some cool new videos coming for you this week coming up. Um, and I'll see you guys. Bye. Mm -hmm.